So as we go through these, I'll, I'll scroll down to the scoring guidelines from 2008, question six. The uh, Taylor series, Taylor polynomial type questions are typically the last question on the entire BC exam, which means it's usually question six on the free response, which means no calculator typically too. Uh, so this was the one that was there in 2008 or similar to it, bless you. Let f be the function given by that. f of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Uh, part A, write the first four non-zero terms and the general term of the Taylor series for f centered at zero. So that's the Maclaurin series as well. So you could go ahead and do, you know, f and then f of zero, f prime, f prime of zero, <clears throat> f double prime, f double prime of zero. That would be getting your information uh, together to create the Taylor polynomial from scratch or the Taylor series, I should say, using Taylor's rule. But in this case, you want to recognize it as something very similar to 1 over 1 minus x, right? So it's a, it's a modified geometric series. So what we need to be able to do is um, rewrite this as something that's 1 over 1 minus something. So that would be 1 over 1 minus, and if you simply call that negative x squared, that's enough to do the trick, right? Okay, so... All I would have to do is take my modified my series for 1 over 1 minus x and then substitute in for every x a negative x squared. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to write this one out first, the one we memorized, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. And then the general term is x to the n, and remember we put plus dot 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 after that. All right, so now beneath there I'm just going to call it 1 over 1 plus x squared. But having already done the algebra up here, and from the ones we looked at yesterday, this one was pretty easy. Now I'm going to replace uh, every x with the negative x squared. So I get a 1, and then a minus x squared. What happens to every even power term? When you square a negative, it becomes positive. So that's just going to be plus x to the fourth, minus x to the sixth, and then plus dot, 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 plus, and if you want, you can create the nth term just by plugging in a negative x squared. And that would be technically correct. I'm going to go ahead and simplify that. Rewrite all these terms. Plus dot, dot, dot. So in the spirit of simplifying, this is going to be an alternating series. That's like negative 1 to the n. And then times x to the 2n plus dot, dot, dot. So just a little bit easier to um, eventually use for, like, intervals of convergence and stuff like that. Okay. Um, is that four terms, four, four non-zero terms? I got one, two, three, four. Yeah, that looks good. And there's the general term. So that's all you'd have to do. That was part A. Not very difficult if you recognized it as geometric and modified it correctly. So in uh, 2008, it was actually 2x over 1 plus x squared. So once they did what we did, they would just have to then multiply every term by 2x. But here's where the points come from. You get three checks for that. One point for two of the first four terms, another check for the remaining terms, and then one for the general term. All right, so there's three checks so far. Not bad. Part B, does the series found in part A, the one we just found, when evaluated at 1, does it converge to f of 1? So in other words, is x equals 1 in the domain of the power series? Well, we know that they're the exact same at the center, right? All series are. So for this one, we're going to have to figure out the radius and interval of convergence, aren't we? The interval of convergence is also the domain. So let's go ahead and find the interval of convergence. I'm going to label that. Do we have to use the ratio test here? You could, but you don't have to, because we know this is geometric series. So this is essentially our ratio, and we could do like what we did yesterday. We could say that uh, the geometric series is going to converge when the absolute value of r, which for us is the absolute value of negative x squared, which is the same as the absolute value of positive x squared is less than what? 1. Yeah. So this one's a little bit different because it is x squared. So um, how do we handle something like that? I want the absolute value of x squared to be within one unit. Well, let's think about that. What does the graph of x squared look like? It looks like this. And it's already non-negative, right? So I want it to be within 
one unit of the center. So it could be out to negative one or one. So this is also going to be when uh, x, which is x minus zero, is less than one. It's the exact same thing. If you square, bless you. If you square a number that is between zero and one, you're going to get a number that is between zero and one. Okay? So it actually turns out the same. All right, so what does that mean? Are the endpoints going to work? Because it's geometric, we need to be within one unit. The radius, if you want to write it, of convergence is one. And we need to be within one unit of the center. And because it's geometric, remember, the endpoints don't work. So the interval of convergence is negative one to one, which is also the domain of the series. Now, if you weren't sure, you could test the endpoints again, right? If you come over here and you plug a negative one in for x, what is negative 1 to the 2 n power? Well, that's negative 1 squared, which is positive 1 to the n power, and 1 to any power is 1. So when you plug in a negative 1, you just get negative 1 to the n, which diverges by the all, uh, nth term test. And if you plug in a 1, uh, you get the same thing. You get negative 1 to the n. So the endpoints don't ever work for a geometric series. So now we can answer the question. If the only values that truly work, that give us real values of the function, are strictly between negative 1 and 1, then is f of 1 going to be the same as the series evaluated at 1? And the answer is no. Since x equals 1 is not in the interval of convergence, which we've already claimed what it is. Or you could say no, since x equals 1 is not in the interval from negative 1 to 1. Or no, since the series only converges on the open interval from negative 1 to 1, and 1 is not in that interval. Something to that effect. Okay, That's why we find intervals of convergence. We want to know for what values is the series the exact same as the function it's representing. Um, so here's kind of what they said. A different problem with the same result. No, the series does not converge when x equals 1, because when x equals 1, the terms of the series do not converge to 0. Don't worry about that. Okay, we found the interval of convergence. We labeled it, and we said that one is not in that interval. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so here's kind of what we did yesterday. Um, it says the derivative of arc tangent is one over one plus x squared. We know that. It's not just some random fact, though. They're trying to give you a hint, right? Write the first four non-zero terms for the Taylor series for arc tangent centered at zero. So again here, if you didn't want to use the hint, you could just take the derivative of arc tangent, the derivative of its derivative, the derivative of its derivative, and evaluate them at zero and set it up using Taylor's rule. That's a lot of work. So in this case, um, if I have this already, how do I get to arc tangent? Integrate it. Good. So I'm going to take my result from up here, which uh, I guess I'll just copy that and that. You can't really just copy this on the test, but you could easily rewrite it, and you don't have tunnel vision, so you can refer to it pretty pretty easily. All right, so there's that. And what I'm going to do now, like we do when we separate the variable, I am going to go ahead and integrate both sides here with respect to x, and I'm going to integrate that with respect to x. Now, of course, the left side becomes arc tangent of x, and we don't need a plus c on that side because that's the solution side. But on the right side, since they're in increasing order, we'll put a C first, and then plus, we'll integrate the terms we have. We get X minus, that's X cubed over 3, or 1 third X cubed, plus X to the fifth over 5, or 1 fifth, minus X to the seventh over 7, plus dot, dot, dot. Did it ask for the general term? No, write the first four non-zero terms. So if they don't say to write the general term, I wouldn't even mess around with it because now if you write it, it has to be correct. So they're liberating you from the general term uh, on the integral. Now, I did go ahead and write the first four terms in the event that C ends up being zero. I still have four. If C ends up not being zero, I'll probably erase the last term just because I only want to have four. If you go above and beyond, they have to be correct. I'm pretty sure X to the seventh over seven is correct. So how are we going to find C? We need to find a point, right? We know that every series 
and the function represents the same at the center, they're centered at zero. So what is arc tangent of zero? Zero, right? Arc tangent of x is the one function of the inverse trig family that you have to memorize. It has uh, horizontal asymptotes at pi halves and negative pi halves. So uh, you could say at zero, zero, now, if you don't want to plug in, what's going to happen if you plug in a zero for the left and a zero for the right? You're going to get C equals zero. So if you know it's going to be zero, you don't even have to show the plug in. You're just kind of labeling it, and this is kind of using an initial condition, which we generated ourselves. So arctangent of x is then the C goes away, and we're just left with this right here, which I'll paste and then plus dot, dot, dot. So it did not ask for the general term, so I did not put it. But you still need the plus dot, 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 which shows that it goes on forever. So not that difficult. It's kind of new finding our own initial condition, but it's not that difficult using the knowledge that the series and the function can, uh, are the same at the center. So you got two checks for that, one for the first two terms and one for the two remaining terms. Theirs is a little bit different because... Oh, notice how they did theirs. They did theirs a little bit differently than ours. They did theirs as a definite integral. They're starting at the initial condition of zero, which is what we could have done, and then integrated to x. I think it's probably just a little bit better. Well, not better, but uh, if you're comfortable with what we did, let's leave it at that. You could do it that way. And then part D, use the series found in part C, the one we just did, to find a rational number A such that the absolute value of the difference between that number and the arc tangent of three-fourths is less than a tenth. Justify. So this is a great segue into the last section of the year, which is called Lagrange error bound. Um, but in this case, we don't have to worry about Lagrange error bound because what we're looking for here is we want this. This is our error or the remainder, whatever you want to call it. We want the difference between the actual and the approximate. We want the difference between the actual and the approximate to be within a tenth. Okay? So remember that because this series is an alternating series, remember that? We had a way to figure out what the error was. Because it's an alternating series, the error is going to be the absolute value of the first unused term in our sum. So we're trying to find the actual sum. A is the approximation of arctangent of three-fourths. And we want, then, the error to be within a tenth. And so, first of all, here is the x value that we're evaluating it at. Right? If I wanted to evaluate arctangent of 3 fourths, I would plug in 3 fourths to both sides. So let's do that. Arctangent of 3 fourths is going to equal 3 fourths minus 3 fourths cubed over 3 plus 3 fourths to the fifth over 5 minus 3 fourths to the fifth, or so, sorry, seventh, over seven, plus dot, dot, dot. So that will actually equal 3 fourths. And notice 3 fourths is going to be well within the radius of convergence. It's not an endpoint, so we don't have to retest it. It falls between negative 1 and 1. So we know it's going to be the same. But we're trying to find, then, an approximation. If I don't use infinitely many terms, what's then the sum that puts me within a tenth of the actual number? So, again, here's all you have to do. Um, the sum is going to be within the first unused term. So let's go ahead and figure out which of these terms is the first one that's smaller than a tenth. All right, so here's the first term. Is three-fourths less than one-tenth? No, it's not. Well, the next one I have to simplify, and it's the absolute value of it, so I don't have to worry about the sign. The next term is going to be three cubed all over three times four cubed. That's the next term, which when I simplify is 3 squared over 4 cubed. Is that going to be less than a tenth? Well, what is that going to be? That's 9 over 64. Is that less than one tenth? No, if you multiply the right side by 6.4 over 6.4, this is equal to 6.4 over uh, 64. So it's not less than. 
So maybe we'll go to the next one. There's a little. This is no calculator, so there's a little bit of work here. Uh, three to the fourth to the fifth is three to the fifth, all over four to the fifth, and then we have another five down there. So, oof, what that? What is that one going to be? Three to the fifth is. Um, let's see, three to the fourth is 81. So 81 times five is 405. Divided by five, four to the fifth. 81 times 3, sorry, 200 and, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. So 243 all over, I think that was 4. All over 5 times 4 to the 5th is, uh, whew, yeah, no kidding. Um, do you think that one's going to be less than a 10? <laughs> Oh, man, I don't know. We could do 4 to the 5th, right? It's 4 squared squared times 4. You could do that, 16 squared times 4. Um, or you can maybe say, okay, perhaps that one it will be less than a tenth. They're, they can't really expect you to go out too, too far without a calculator, right? And this one was pretty darn close, pretty darn close. So if you want to then assume that this one, is less than a tenth. Okay, so I'll go ahead and write this. Let's do it this way. Let me get rid of all that. I'll just say that that is less than one tenth. So if that's going to be my first term that's less than a tenth, then that's going to be my first unused term, right? Which means I'm only going to approximate arctangent of three fourths by adding up the first two terms. And that's what they're looking for. So you say, so A. The approximation is going to be 3 fourths minus 3 fourths cubed over 3. Okay? And that's the value. So that number minus the actual, regardless of which one's bigger, absolute value, is going to be within a tenth of the actual. All right? Um, so just uh, for what it's worth here, if we wanted to actually figure out what that is. 3 to the 5th divided by 4 to the 5th uh, divided by 5. That is going to be, this is 0 0.047, which is less than a tenth, which is 0 0.1. So it was right. Our hunch was correct. 6.4 is really, really close to 9. If we go out another term, which is really another power of 2, because we're counting by odd numbers, we would, we would anticipate or suspect without having to find it that it would be less than a tenth. All right, so for the last part here, um, you're going to get three more checks. Uh, for using 3 fourths, not a half, for using x equals 3 fourths, you're going to get a check. We did that, right? Where did we use it? We actually kind of generated it right here. So that would get the using check. Um, for finding the value like we did, that would be a check. And the justification. Where is our justification? Our justification comes right here. Without actually evaluating as a decimal, when we say that that is less than a tenth, then that becomes our first unused term. That's the justification. I guess it's lunchtime, huh? Okay, so... Um, we'll stop right there. We have a little bit to finish up after lunch with some known power series, and uh, we may just call that a day, okay? And then do Lagrange Airbound tomorrow. On Thursday, we'll start.